Learning curves have a steep learning curve, in that they're not that difficult to learn, but they are a misunderstood topic. I say this because a learning curve is actually a graphical representation that depicts how more experience of something improves learning of that topic, or how repeated iterations of a specific task improve performance of that task. The consequence of this is that a steep learning curve actually refers to something that's initially much quicker to learn, despite its common meaning referencing something difficult to learn. If the curve is steeper before the plateau, it would mean an individual took less experience to improve their ability or learning. Likewise, if a curve is more rounded, that means it required more experience to get to an equivalent level. You may have found that explanation difficult to follow, which is good because now you're experiencing a steep learning curve. If I were to estimate your position on the curve, I would put you somewhere around here. But let's look at some examples of learning that demonstrate the concepts I've discussed so far. The more I experienced interaction with strangers, the quicker I learned it wasn't for me. This was a sheer learning curve in the sense that I was born that way. There's also a distinction to be made between information and comprehension. Information is the raw data, whereas comprehension is understanding the implication and consequence of that data. You might be able to memorize every word of a script, but that doesn't mean you understand what it turtles. This distinction is important because if you only focus on one or the other, you won't actually be learning. If you try to take in information before you understand why it's significant, you'll just know lots of information that you can't do anything with. Imagine memorizing all the words of a language without learning what any of them mean. Similarly, it's possible to have a broad understanding of a topic, but not have a comprehensive knowledge of the specifics. Most people can appreciate the complexity of their own body in a broad sense, but few actually have a complete rote knowledge of all the parts, organs, and muscles because you don't need to know this information to function. If you had to understand every detail of the human nervous system before you could walk, everyone would constantly be falling over. It would become a new social norm. People would travel by falling over in a particular direction again and again until they reached their destination. So how do you actually overcome a learning curve? We're well into the video and I'm only just getting to the question in the title. Well done Mike, what a concise writer you are. Number one, define your learning into actionable and objective outcomes with deadlines. If you want to overcome initial difficulty, then you need to set yourself a target for the practical realistic progress you want to make. Without this, you'll be stuck in the earlier stages of your development for much longer. If you want to get better at writing, for example, the best thing you can do is write. It turns out just planning what you'll write in your head is a terrible strategy for actually getting anything done. And napping does not count as planning. Two, maintain your health and manage your workload. This one is crucial. If you feel very unmotivated, tired or irritable, it will be very difficult to actually do any quality work and you likely won't find it very enjoyable. If you've had a busy day, it can actually be detrimental to try and do work in a frazzled mental state, especially during the initial stages of learning when you're likely trying to understand a great deal of new and often complex information. What is more effective is giving yourself some time off and breaks to recharge and come back to a project fresh. You'll be more productive and more efficient. I balance my health and workload exceptionally well. I have equal amounts of caffeine, sugar, and cocaine on a daily basis. Three, manipulate the human attention span and build incentives into your workflow. This is especially significant in the digital age as it's widely theorized that our attention spans are suffering as we adjust to the constant feed of information that's always within our reach. This is detrimental when trying to learn something new as it's often necessary to learn low interest yet high value information in order to gain a greater understanding of a topic. Nobody's rushing to read the Second World War by Winston Churchill but I'm sure those that do will gain an exceptional insight into that period of history. With this knowledge it's possible to create strategies that circumvent our falling attention spans. A common technique used when studying is to break up your work time into chunks whereby you work for say 25 minutes and then you have a break for five minutes and you repeat this cycle another three times before having a final 20 minute break. Don't 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 listen to the text it's a liar. Burn the text. Burn the text. I know what you're thinking this is a video Mike how am I gonna burn the text? You watch me. Anyway I'll see you next time. Thank you.